Hey dude, welcome back. This video is going to be on how to farm mindbenders in the Season of Dawn. Season of Dawn introduced some interesting mods that allows you to break the game a little bit. The main mod we were looking at is Heavy Handed. Heavy Handed is an Arc Affinity Season of Dawn mod that states while charged with light, regen half of your melee energy when you use the charge melee ability. We aren't going to care about this perk, but we will care about the second perk. While surrounded by multiple enemies, defeating the enemy with a fusion, shotgun, sidearm, or SMG adds ammo for that weapon to your reserves. Now this allows you to have near infinite ammo while fighting a large amount of adds with a fusion, shotgun, sidearm, or SMG. Now this mod pairs incredibly well with Telesto. Telesto's perk says that multi-kills with this weapon immediately reloads your equipped kinetic and energy weapon from reserves. Long story short, you can have bottomless clip with Telesto. The next bit of this build involves these few things. Nezerak Sin, Double Grenade Finder, Devour Warlock, Double Grenade Scavenger, and Double Light Reactor. And while not necessary, this build works very well with a Kinetic and Heavy Grenade Launcher, aka Mountaintop and Love and Death, Wendigo, Swarm of the Raven, whatever. The only modifier my team used was Momentum. This is just so it's easier to stay alive at plates. It's not used that much anywhere else. Would highly recommend both having a Titan with Middle Tree Sentinel and Hunter with Top Tree Tether Orpheus Rigs. First off, we Sparrow Drive past all the beginning enemies. The path that I take here has seemed to be the most consistent. If you have either the Solstice Sparrow EV37 Void Streak or the Scourge Raid Sparrow always on time, they have a perk on them that makes enemies less aggressive while you are riding either Sparrow. Now as we approach our first checkpoint, we want to start off our bottomless clip build. Before you run through this door, you want to activate your devour grenade, and then kill all the enemies guarding the plate with Telesto. After you kill all these enemies guarding, you want to stand on the plate to spawn in the walker. Once the plate is down and the walker is spawned, move over to the left side over here and activate Devour again. After so, start killing all the enemies. The faster you kill, the better it is for your teammates. Your job is to keep your teammates alive, so make sure you target the chieftains first and then kill all the other ads. While you are killing enemies, have your teammates break a leg of the walker. And then all three of you go inside the bubble and use whatever ammo you have to kill the walker. I use my grenade launcher, my friend is using alone as a god. Both of these weapons work very well against the walker. Next, as your teammates run ahead, wait a little bit for the voice line. If you don't, you might not activate the checkpoint properly. Once you hear the voice line, then you want to run to the next checkpoint, skipping most of the ads. When you get to this group of ads, kill one with your melee to activate devour. If you don't have a melee charge, just use a grenade. Once you get into this room, you want to try to Nova Bomb one of the chieftains. If you don't hit him like I did, it's okay, just start spam killing everything with your infinite Telesso ammo. While doing this, you will take almost all attention off of your teammates so that they can run around on the plates and stay alive as easy as possible. Make sure that your teammates designate a plate that they're going to stand on and have them run circles around the plates to keep momentum active. After both plates are lowered, you want to run to the gate and place a rift for your teammates. Sit right against the wall and keep moving forwards. For this mini boss, if you have Nova Bomb Charge, use it against him and then spam heavy before he goes into the gate, like so. Afterwards, skip past all of these ads to get towards the boss room. If done right, you should be there before 4 minutes in. Since we have a little time here, I want to talk about why you're running double grenade launcher ammo finder. The reason being is that you have mountaintop and a heavy grenade launcher both equipped at the same time. This means you're almost always going to be activating the grenade launcher ammo finder. In other cases, when paired with double grenade scavenger like we are running, you'll have a surplus of grenade ammo to spam wherever you want. Spam the boss with heavy until he's immune, then work on killing the adds.
Once all the ads are killed and he's hidden away in his little cubby hole, have your hunter tether. You also want to have your sentinel use either his melee, grenade, or super to attach void detonators to the enemies to spam kill them all. You should have another Noble Bomb by now, use it to get the boss to another immune phase. Use whatever heavy hitting option you have to get the boss to his immune phases as fast as possible. My teammate was shooting anarchy at his feet before we teleported so that his shield would break extremely fast. If you don't understand how this boss works, here's a summary. When you first damage him, he'll go immune and hide away. Then you have to kill a wave of ads. After that, he will come out of hiding and you can damage him. He will go immune and teleport you to the sky. You damage him, he goes immune. He teleports you, you damage him, he goes immune, then he hides away. Then you kill another wave of ads. He comes out, you damage him, he goes immune, he teleports you, you damage him, he goes immune, he teleports you, then you damage to kill. Once he hides away, do the same thing, tether and void detonators. Take a step back and enjoy the fireworks show if you'd like to. If you killed enough enemies and made enough orbs, you should have Nova Bomb again. Use it to get the boss to another immune phase. Kill some adds, get teleported, immune phase, kill some adds, get teleported, and then melt the boss. This strategy was the most consistent strategy that I have ran because it keeps all three of us alive consistently at the plate checkpoint, which in my opinion is the quote unquote hardest part of the strike. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned another way to farm the Mindbender strike. If you think I deserved it, consider subscribing and leaving a like. Also consider following my Twitch. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday evenings and would love to see some new faces. Anyways guys, I'm out.